Passkey. Passkey. Passkeys. Passkeys. Passkey. You may not yet have heard of them, but passkeys are the future of how we stay safe online. Dozens of internet businesses, large and small, are hoping this new bit of tech will finally kill off the password. So what are passkeys and why are they a step up from what we've been doing all these years? Well, if you think about an online service as a door, you get in by putting in your password or a passcode. But this is obviously insecure, as all a fraudster needs is the code or password and they're in. A passkey acts a little bit like a key card. It checks who I am as well as if I have the right code. But with passkeys, it's all done on a device and with clever encryption. Setting up a passkey takes a few minutes. The online service asks you to verify your identity using your device. It's not hard, but it is more of a hassle than setting up a username and password like we've always done. So why is this huge shift taking place and is it worth it? Well, it's because passwords are, and always have been, a terrible way to keep us safe. How bad are passwords as a security measure? Awful. I would say that if a company uh, is restricting things only by password, they're 100% vulnerable. We will always get in. Corey Macy is a hacker for the good guys. She's been breaking into computer networks for companies for years to help them improve defenses. People are really bad when they create passwords. Um, Nine out of 10 times when I go into an environment and I try the password summer 2023 or winter 2023, you're going to get a few accounts. Uh, we find that people frequently use seeded passwords like National Predator 12. That's the first password that they made. And then across every platform, they'll just change it. A very minuscule amount. Pass keys, do you think they're, they're gonna help things? Yes. Make your job harder. Definitely harder, yeah. Uh, the field is always changing. Passwords can of course be made more secure if you're willing to put the effort in. Keeping your password secure these days is a bit of a process. First of all, of course, you've got to have really complex passwords across every different online service. Impossible to remember, so then you need a password manager. Then you need to have multi-factor authentication as well. So if you try and log into a service that you don't normally have on, let's say this device, it's a hassle. It's no surprise that the cybersecurity world has largely failed to get the general public to jump through the hoops needed to make passwords safe. My password manager needs an authentication code. So now, whether we like it or not, the future of logging in online is through our phones with thumbprints, pin codes, and increasingly facial ID. But how safe is your face? Well, here in the Fraud Lab, at online identity expert on Fido, they think like criminals to try and trick login services and improve security. It's probably not enough to fool you, but can it fool a machine? Well, you can make the 2D version at home very simply, printing it off the right size and then yeah. cutting out some holes. It's very unsophisticated, it's low tech. These masks, as you can see, they vary in quality and the trick there is some of them might look similar to the person that's on the document. But what we've found increasingly over the last few years, certainly, is that we've found more and more what I would call professional fraudsters. Mm. They want to ramp it up. They want to be doing several hundred checks or uh, uh, onboarding attempts um, over the course of an hour. Instead of using masks, they've started using deep fakes in the biometric side of it. So I am now you. Yep. Uh, and if you smile, you have my smile. Yeah. Yep, that, that's my smile. Yeah. That's the weird thing, because the photo doesn't have my smile on it. Because you sent us uh, a single front-on shot, mm -hmm. and again, this isn't from the video you sent. This oh, okay, is, this, this is from a, just a, a still picture. Yep, and I could have done this from an image on the internet, and now we're both you. It's so weird. Jonathan, come and have a look. You've got to come and be me. Yep. <laughs> There's Joe the cameraman. <laughs> See, I'm doing two jobs. The speed of innovation in fraud is always worrying, but never more so than in the last year, as deepfake tech has become more sophisticated and readily available. If you look just around the edge of the screen here, can oh, you see there's a... I was a... just about to ask, how do you actually spot it? But I can see a little bit of... It's Distortion. picking up this pattern, pattern here, right. Okay. And if you look just around the edge of my face, so just around here, mm. 
When I move, sometimes you can see there's a bit of a distortion there as it sort of switches. I can barely see it. Too. Right, it's, but this is the you're, thing. You're it's, obviously trained for this and yeah. Yeah, and it's becoming harder and harder for human beings to spot this stuff, which is why we are training machine learning models to do it. Even with advances in deep fake tech, Simon and his team agree that pass keys that use biometrics like facial ID are a massive improvement on passwords. No system will ever fully be hacker proof, but pass keys do mean that the future's brighter for our lives online.